Good day to you, it is I, Justin Hawkins from the darkness and uh, Justin Hawkins Rides Again, which is this YouTube channel. Don't forget, like, subscribe, thanks so much for your support. It's been a, a hell of a ride. The last two weeks have uh, left me with a, my head spinning and my heart a flutter. And uh, it's all because of you guys. Thanks so much. Um, so yesterday I was told that uh, one of the trending new artists in the rock sphere uh, on the platform TikTok is none other than Dire Straits. Um, Dire Straits being, of course, the epitome, the living embodiment of dad rock, which is one of my favourite genres. Um, in fact, probably is my favourite genre of all time. So I thought we'd take the opportunity that this affords us to, uh, for me to introduce you to Dire Straits using four, count them, four brilliant songs and spread across only two albums. So I think that's... If, I, if, I, if you're going to dip your toe into the, the murky waters of dad rock, you should start with Dire Straits and you should start with these four songs. I used to have a sweatshirt that had Dire Straits on it and it had a picture of Mark Knopfler wearing a headband. But you know like um, you know when you get like a, a glam rock band and the headband seems to get wider and wider as their years advance and it conceals all manner of widow's peakery at the sides there. Um, that's not why... That's not why Dire Straits wore them, because they wore them here, and as the as the widow's peakery became more accented here, it exposed two um, naked bits of skin where the where the receding was occurring, and they they were really sort of almost showcasing the receding nature of their hairlines, and they didn't care because they were dad rockers for life. Dad rock for life is these are the words to live by. Um, anyway, the song I'm talking about is uh, Telegraph Road. Let me just check what year that came out. Okay, so it came out in 1982. Like a lot of really great dad rock. I think that's a good year for dad rock. It's pre the sort of synthesizer. I think the synthesizers in rock kicked in about 80, 1984 with uh, Van Halen and stuck around for a bit too long, probably, for most people's tastes. Um, like if I, it's this song is about twelve minutes long. It's about Mark Knopfler's uh, doing a history lesson on the um, inception, conception, and uh, development, and uh, I suppose he's talking about the rise and decline of of Detroit in Michigan. Um, it's got this brilliant riff in it that goes like this. Like um, oh yeah, it starts off on a D minor. How's it go? Right. And then it goes D minor again. A lot of people do that D major to minor. You hear it in, um, like in uh, Radiohead's Creep. But you often hear it at the end of a, of, a, of a sequence. So it would be like that. At the end of a chord sequence, they always do that. But he's done it in the middle. That's because he's really clever. That's the bit, the push. Long time ago, came a man on a trek, walking 30 miles with a sack on his back, and he put down his load where he thought it was the best, made a home in the wilderness. Built a cabin and a winter store, plowed up the ground by the cold lake shore, the other travellers came walking down the track And they never went further And they never went back And then came the churches Then came the schools Then came the lawyers I always thought they said liars, but he said lawyers Same thing, no, I'm just kidding Yeah, just to let you know, I'm in a hotel Hence this uh, background um, And don't, don't worry, you can come and see the darkness live by by looking at thedarknesslive.com um, you'll consult the uh, tour dates and do witness us. There's a lot of guitar soloing in it. He's an amazing guitar player. He uses his thumb and these two fingers like this weird knot for a claw. A lot of people who sort of train in Nashville and, and learn the traditional way use all of their fingers and you know that like you see flamenco players doing it but I, when I was a kid I was watching Mark Knopfler and I've learned to play with this one and these two. Um, it's the Knopfler style, and then you use the other two to rest on there. Um, it's not 
it's not how you're supposed to do it, but I guess he's self-taught and it makes him utterly unique. He's a great lyricist, he's a great songwriter. He also wrote, um, remember that song, Private Dancer by um, Tina Turner, the one about dancing for money, Deutschmarks, dollars, all that stuff, talking about currency. Um, they should do a new version of that now with crypto, shouldn't they? Yeah, he's definitely a world genius. That's the thing about him. Um, so Telegraph Road, it's 12, 12 and a half minutes long, but it's super atmospheric. You'll be absorbed in it. Uh, just let yourself, it's a journey. I've made a playlist that's called All the Dire Straits You Need For Now. It'll be in the description. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, consult the playlist, what's in the description. So Telegraph Road was the first one from the same album, um, which is Love Over Gold, um, Private Investigations. You know the one? It's a mystery to me. The game commences for the usual fee. Plus expenses. Um, it doesn't do it in that voice, but, but near enough. Um, the great thing about Mark Knopfler is he doesn't do a great deal of singing. They're not anthems as such, but you can definitely mutter along with them. It's all about his uh, lyrics and his guitar playing. Um, also, I think one of the really iconic things about um, Dire Straits on the whole is uh, is the piano player. He's awesome. You'll hear it in uh, Private Investigations, this bit where he goes, do, do, do. Dum dum dum, and it's super cinematic. You can you can feel the uh, the rain beating down on the. Uh, it's really noiry. Noiry is that a word? Noiry. Noir is French for black. So it's like it's like cinematic and noiry, and dark and gritty, and it's got this bit in it where he goes. The, the first phrase of his solo is. he's just um, he's got so much um, expression and control and all the I always think that um, I just think he's one of the great sort of nylon string players because uh, he, he plays a nylon string and he plays one of those resonator guitars in places as well and something about his technique just really makes it sing to me anyway etc etc you'll get it but he's playing that on the, on the acousto just it's like listening to a movie from beginning to end no resolution and just leaves a really sort of bitter taste in the mouth like all good movies should the third one is a brilliant one it's tunnel of love have you heard heard tunnel of love i think that song's really precious to me because you know when you grow up in a coastal town you um you you can usually hear people screaming on a on a roller coaster and you're wondering if that's like um an incident outside a pub in the street or if somebody's hurt themselves but it's not it's just it's Pleasurewood Hills up the A12 between Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft um, and he's singing about um, presumably romantic experiences that took place at the Spanish city now where was that now I did a bit of uh, research about I like the Spanish city to me when we were kids he doesn't sing like that but the thing about Tunnel of Love is like he's talking about um, fun fair stuff he's describing um, he's using, um, you know, fairground attractions as allegorical devices to describe a relationship with um, somebody that he presumably meets in one of those places. It's it's uh, it's all about the guitar solo at the end. Um, there's there's one sort of there's a sort of interim guitar solo that happens um, after the second after a middle eight section. But then at the end, he drives it home with this, uh, it's a bit that goes like, I'm just gonna find it and play it. So there's a bit where it, it really breaks down and goes. Look it always did, like the Spanish city to me. 
went away working. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. I think he's the greatest lead guitarist that there's ever been in terms of doing a melodic one. That solo there, it always makes me think that Mark Knopfler is like um, a musical sort of parent of mine. And um, he's leading me out to this fairly generic chord sequence again like this. to the beginning um, and it goes around and around and around and he finds a million different ways to ex to do expressive melodic soloing over it there's um, there's so many phrases that you could transplant from that and put into other solos and improve them it's a little bit like I don't know it's like a best of it's about it's like a um, within those four chords this is how this is this these are all the things you can do and some of it's really technical some of it's just really beautifully played it's an amazing solo, and uh, I never get tired of hearing it, and I've been listening to it for the last 30-something years. A lot, a lot of years. Lots of years. It's, it's really staggering. So I think Tunnel Love has to be on there for the solo alone. And then the most obvious one that I've got in this playlist of four would be Romeo and Juliet. If you'll permit me... I'll retune for that. <laughs> I want to show you the riff because it's. Uh, I love playing it. Hang on. It is a prohibitive tuning in that most people aren't going to be asked to prepare their guitar. Just have a go on this, and then because when you do, you're not going to play it as well as the guy did. In an earlier video, you'll remember that I said that guitars should only be tuned to standard. This is why. It's a pain in the ass. And I, I always think that it's like, if you have a guitar that isn't tuned to standard, how do you feel where the intervals are when you're jamming? You know, if you're doing like um, some kind of improvisational thing where you think your fingers want to take you, that doesn't correspond to what you're used to, does it? I mean, it's like the... Also, it's a bit cheaty. I think it's a bit cheating. Um, but I'll permit this one because it's Mark Knopfler. He's like an ancient and golden god. So I have um, briefly retuned the guitar, not very accurately, uh, to try and play the riff of Romeo and Juliet. It's quite beautiful. If you play it fast, you lose all of the... It's like driving fast. You miss all of the scenery. And... Isn't that lovely? But love is just this. And you'd think it would be, you know, let's try that again. It's just addictive to play. Yeah. Yeah, he's really clever. And then, you know, a lot of the time people, um, you know, they criticise lyricists and say, well, it's not Shakespeare. Well, actually, that is Shakespeare. It's Romeo and Juliet. It is Shakespeare. It's Dire Straits Spear with his headband on. Uh, th there was one time when um, I think, you know, culturally Dire Straits has affected me in lots of different ways. I remember we were playing pool in a bar once. Um, my brother was about to take a shot and I said to my father, was, the, the teams were my brother and my uncle or my cousin and me and my father. And I said to my dad, if he pots this dad, we're in Dire Straits. And then my brother looked at me and said, get your headbands on and took the shot. Um, so it shows you the sports headband, I mean, just to keep the sweat out of your eyes, because when you're playing that sort of expressive guitaring, which really relies on knowing full well where you're planting your fingers, you do need something to absorb the uh, perspiration. Um, and they made it, I'm not going to say fashionable or even stylish, but they made it. Um, and you can too. So look at my um, playlist, it's called... <coughs> My playlist will be in the description. It's called All the Dire Straits You Need, dot, 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 for now. It's only supposed to be an introduction, just four songs. Listen to them, give them a chance. You'll love it because they're awesome. 
Um, and uh, like, subscribe, keep coming back. Thanks so much for your support. Sorry about exposing so much flesh, but it is hot in here. Um, and with that, I bid you adieu. Justin Hawkins rides again.